All right, welcome back. Uh, it's Tragic Life here with uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I'm wishing I would have waited to record this another time because uh, the remake's coming out. And dang it. I wonder if there's going to be anything new, knowing the way they do these games, probably. Depending on where I am in my life at that point, maybe I'll play that one too. Maybe I won't. I don't know yet. <laughs> um, so last time we left off, okay, we're looking at that. That was, uh, thank you. Okay, okay. Well, he can't seem to stand still. Can we stop? All right, whatever. Um, I let him die by a gate. Now, I'm going to crawl into this. I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is a bomb. I'm about to find out the hard way. Nope, I'm going to crawl under it. All right. I don't want to find out what it is. Go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, and leave a comment. I'm going to try to play for about 20, 30 to 40 minutes today. Um, I also got to do another recording. So what do we got here? Um, so it says to equip the thermal goggles. And you'll notice the fence that seems to be rather hot. This is an electrified fence. Uh-oh. Um, do I have the means to put things to sleep? I do. So we're going to go ahead and do that because I don't feel like killing this next thing. All right, so before we move any forward, forward, I'm saying words, but they're not making sense. Uh, there is a Kiro town here. I'm just trying to... Okay, so let me see where we are on the map. All right, we got a little while. So if you look at it here, there is a hole right there. And that's where we're going to go. Don't touch the wire because it will zip zip you. You can see it. It's probably because of the rain. So we're going to see. Can I have better camouflage? Plus 20, plus 20. I'm going to do something crazy in a bit, because why not? Ooh. Okay, so we got Claymores. That's going to be fun. If it's like any of the other games, you should be able to crawl into them and grab them. I'm going to find out the hard way. I'm going to grab a bunch of claymores because claymores are booms. I don't like claymores. I've actually seen one blow up in real life. They're not fun. Looks like there's a hole right there. Looks like there's at least two more. At least one more. Oh. Is that all of them? Oh, there's one there. Looks like there's one there. We're going to get them all, because I don't like claymores. There's also going to be a, another Kiroton here, and there's going to be... Is that it right there? Huh? 
Okay, is there anything better? Leaf. Okay, somebody made a noise, but I don't see where. Ooh. All right. Let me see where we are so I can make sure we get this Kiratan. Hopefully this will work. Not really sure how that dog woke up, but okay. He keeps messing around, I'm gonna eat dog meat. <clears throat> so I ate the milk snake, and uh, no, he didn't like it. guys. I know I want to go this way. Okay, let's keep moving.
I don't know if it is, but we're gonna go find out. I need again so we got we got the last keratin over here that's an awesome thing now what that's the big question we got the splitter uniform that's awesome um all right so it's time to go lethal force i don't really want to i feel like he should be dead because you know he's on he's leaning on the electric fence Dang it. Sorry, guys. such a great day. Yeah, I've got a gunshot wound. So let's see. All right, we're good. All right, don't touch the side. Use a knife to remove a bullet. Oh. Ah, what's the place to do it? Okay. Um... Alright, there's one more thing to get here. I just gotta find it. Looking for a hollowed out tree. I don't think this is it. Assume it's that. That looks like a hollowed out tree. All right, we got a new uniform, two of them. So let's see. That's kind of cool. Okay. Splitter, chocolate chip. All right. So before anything, I just I've got to do it, guys. I'm sorry. I, I need to know how he responds to this because you know it's gonna be fun. They sick the tag dogs on you? People have been using dogs in war since before recorded history. The Greek and Roman armies used to send out packs of dogs with spike collars to charge at enemy ranks. Attack dogs were regularly employed in the first and second world wars as well. 
Traditionally, dogs have been used to keep watch, send messages, and assist in search operations. Then the Soviets came up with a new idea, using them to carry bombs. Bomb dogs? Yeah. They were trained to dive beneath tanks carrying a payload of bombs. Whoa, that's me. Apparently it worked pretty well, but the Russians messed up, man. They used their own tanks for the training. Turns out the dogs kept going after Russian tanks and blowing them up. So the plan was scrapped before it got off the ground. That's hilarious. Well, I don't think you need to worry about those dogs exploding on you. They don't seem to be the bomb carrying type. But they are highly trained in tracking and detection. Don't underestimate them. They're excellent trackers and ferocious fighters. Attack dogs move fast and are deadly in proximity encounters. They'll pick up your scent and use it to track you so it'll be hard to shake them off. In a way, they're more dangerous than any human opponent. That actually makes sense. Be prepared. The Soviet-made smoke grenades you might find around there also seem to act as a mild tear gas. It might not have that much of an effect on human targets wearing balaclavas, but it ought to wreak havoc to a dog's nose. If you're being chased by attack dogs, give them a taste of a smoke grenade. All right, we're not done. Hold on. Hey, Snake, remember back at the abandoned factory when you whittled the grip of that 45 down? Yeah. I've never heard of a customization like that before. Why the grip? To fit it with a knife. A knife? You're going to keep the knife and the gun both at the ready? Yep. That's the idea. Why would you want to do that? Sometimes a knife works better in close proximity encounters. So I equip both at the same time. That way I can switch back and forth in an instant. Badass. So that's that. CQC. Okay, come on. They sick the tag dogs on you? The Soviet-made smoke grenades you might find around there also seem to act as a mild tear gas. You've already said this, but... It might not have that much of an effect on human targets wearing balaclavas, but it ought to wreak havoc Dude, to a dog's nose. If you're being chased by attack dogs, give them a taste of a smoke grenade. Is he not going to mention the weird uniform that I'm wearing? Snake, you said Eva said her Mauser was a Type 17, right? Yeah, what about it? That model was produced in the 1920s in a weapons lab in the Shangxi province in China. The cartridge part sticks out lower than the original to accommodate 45 caliber rounds. The barrel and chamber are a little bit thicker too. But most telling of all, it's got Chinese characters engraved on both sides of the frame like you saw. And that firing stance Eva was talking about where you hold the gun horizontally, that's a trademark of the Chinese. Just like you were saying, when you're firing in full auto mode, the muzzle jump effect gives you a horizontal strafing motion. They say it's especially deadly in indoor and close range mop-up actions. The Japanese that. called it bandit shooting and used to dread it. Makes you wonder where she learned to shoot like that. They sick the tag dogs on you? You might not say anything, that kinda sucks. You know that army motorcycle that Eva was riding? That's a replica of a German model. A replica? Yeah. After World War II, the Soviets confiscated an entire assembly line from a German motorcycle factory, machines and all. And then they took it back with them and started producing replicas? Exactly. Originally, that motorcycle was designed to be used with a sidecar attached. That means it's got enough power to drag a 200 plus pound sidecar around. So that's how she could pull off all those crazy stunts. Uh huh. Of course, it takes a lot of skill to be able to control that much power. That Eva chick is something else. Hey, you've got an M1911A1. Yeah, a 45. 50 years since the army adopted the first model, and they're still using them. It's a real gem of an automatic pistol. But aren't you going to need more than just one little handgun? Not at all. When you're in a tight spot or fighting in close quarters, sometimes a handgun works better than a rifle. And if I equip a knife at the same time, I can instantaneously switch over to hand-to-hand -hand combat. I see. That 45 you've got there is a lot different from the original, though. Looks like someone did some serious work on it. It's more than a little. First of all, the feeding ramp is polished to a mirror sheen. It's not going to have any feeding problems. The slide's been replaced with a reinforced version, and it meshes perfectly with the frame. The frame itself has been iron welded and scraped down multiple times for maximum precision. The front strap part of the frame has been checkered to make it dig into the hand. That prevents any slipping. The sight system's original too. 
It's a three dot type. It's got an enlarged front sight, giving it superior target sighting capability. The regular hammer has been replaced with a ring hammer. That enhances the cocking control and increases the hammer down speed. They also reworked the grip safety to accommodate the ring hammer. Looks like they eliminated it altogether. This is a tool for pros. The thumb safety and the slide stop are extended to allow for more precise handling. The base of the trigger guard is whittled out so you can use a high grip. And the trigger itself is a long type for easy finger access. The trigger pull is about 3.5 pounds. That's about a pound and a half lighter than normal. The magazine well has been widened to make it easier to put in a new magazine. The magazine catch button has been cut down low to make it harder to hit it by mistake. The mainspring housing has been changed to a flat type to increase grip. And it's even been fitted with stepping so it doesn't slip from the recoil when firing. On top of that, they added cocking serrations to the front part of the slide. That lets you load and eject cartridges faster in an emergency. Hmm. Whoever did this is a professional. No question, this thing could shoot a one hole at 25 yards in a machine rest. Well, I'll be damned. That's some gun. Yeah, I've never used a weapon this fine in my life. It is a nice weapon. That was a lot of information. Snake, what is that stuff there you're we wearing? Go. I don't know. It's called Gakko camo, whatever that means. What? Paramedic. You've never heard of Gakko? No. Nope. Never. You must live in a cave or something. Maybe. Well, excuse me. By the way, Snake, that outfit is really killing your camo index. Unless you want the enemy to see you, I suggest you change your clothes as... Why? Why? Because his camo index is... Camo index shmamo index. Uh, hold on now. He's wearing the Gakko suit. Why? Because it looks cute. Snake, talk some sense into her. What's wrong with being cute? <laughs> Am I the only normal person around here? Maybe. Okay. It took a little while to get there. I got one more. I got one more, guys. Sorry. It's actually not a costume. Is it this? We get rid of the cardboard box. You all right? They sick the tag dogs. You gonna say anything about the crocodile head or are you just gonna ignore it? A cap shaped like a crocodile head, you say? Yeah. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. <laughs> you know, animal disguises are one of the oldest tricks in the book in the intelligence world. I don't know whether it's true or not, but I've heard that during World War II, the OSS used to use cow suits. Supposedly, they sent agents out to hide in herds of real cows so they could spy on enemy units as they passed by. Nowadays, I guess I most people that. wouldn't even give a crocodile-shaped cap a second look. They think it was just a gag item. But if you use it the right way, it can be an effective weapon for spying. Hmm. I gotta hand it to you, Snake. You're one sharp guy. You okay, Snake? Now forget it. Huh? Was I trying to get a funny thing out of him and he turned it into something real? All right, all right, we're gonna go ahead and move. Um, I meant to do this because I don't want to. I look really silly, so. Um, all right, let's get to the next area. So, where are we going? Um, so what do I, I'm gonna put my tiger stripe on because I'm gonna need it. Okay, so it says tiger face split and tiger stripe. Where are we going?
Ooh. Ooh. No, I do. <clears throat> oh, I'm not gonna be good. <laughs> okay. Wasn't terrible. We better be in the That's everyone, cool. Um, so this should be uniform water. Okay, so you can blow that helicopter up and it will not be later in the game. Like it, it won't be in another area. You'd like actually eliminate it from the game. The problem with that is that area actually gets harder. Um, So there should be... All right, there should be a mousetrap in here. Okay, we got the mousetrap. There's a lot of items I want to grab them all. Got some bullets. Uh, get under the bed, sir. 22 bullets, those are always good. Got another suppressor, that's always good. Should be a wooden shack, we'll go ahead and go in here. Should be... Is a Russian calorie made, am I correct? Um... Russian ration and calorie mate and another mouse trap. Got it. Alright, you got the snow plate. Okay, there's another white building. We're probably gonna end it once we're done with this area. 
All right, so we got D Med, Life Med, and Bandages. I'm missing something. There's another one. Uh, antidote. This is the last building here. It's the armory. White prosperous grenade, TNT, stun. Grenade. All right, so okay, so I think this is. Oh, I got some bullets. So this is probably where I'm going to end it. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and find the exit, and then I'm just going to end right there. Uh, we got everything in this area. There was a lot. So I'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos.